You know when you watch a show and you feel like you have to say something about it. Maybe not necessarily good or bad, but it deserves some type of response. That's how I felt about Yuki Yuna, and that is why I'm making this review. Though, to be perfectly honest, it's hard to talk much about it without getting into spoilers, and while I am going to try as much as I can, there are a few things that might be best to experience blind. So, if you want a short answer of if you should watch Yuki Yuna, yes, go watch it. If you want a long answer, well, that's why you clicked on this video, isn't it? Yuki Yuna is a dark magical girl show, and it is a genre that I absolutely love. Every time I see one of these shows, I like how they take a different angle to the whole magical girl thing and take these ideals of these girls fighting to be heroes and then smash them against a far darker reality. These girls face tragedy, suffering, and they learn that their dreams of being a hero are not that simple. Yuki Yuna is split into three parts, which I'm going to cover separately. The first is Yuki Yuna is a Hero, the first season of the anime and the base story. Then the first half of season 2 is the Washio Sumi chapter, which takes place two years before the main story. And then the second half of season 2 is the Hero chapter, which is a continuation of the original. So let's first go over season 1, Yuki Yuna is a Hero. This season follows what you would expect from a show like this. In episode 1, the four girls of the Hero Club are given powers and must protect the world, specifically by fighting in a parallel dimension where monsters called vertices are attacking. They have to defeat these vertices to protect their city, so they use their newfound powers to do so. But what they don't know is that there is a cost to doing so, and that there is a lot more to the vertices and even the world as a whole than they could ever imagine. The world itself is really interesting, because the show takes place 300 years in the future, but 300 years before the story took place, or in our time, a great calamity befell the world, wiping out most of humanity. But now Shinju-sama protects what is left of humanity, which is basically the world that we see. Though the world does not know that Shinju-sama is also in danger, and it is up to these magical girls to protect Shinju-sama so the world can remain in peace. I really enjoyed seeing more about the world and how it really worked, but this is also one of the issues I had with the show, as it felt like a lot of the explanations weren't there, or while we might have understood what was happening, we did not understand the why behind it. Talking to some people who know the light novels well, it seems like a lot of these questions were covered in light novels that have not been adapted, but since I'm covering the anime, these really do not factor into my opinion of the show as a whole, though I do want to read the light novels if I ever get the chance. The story itself also does something kind of different with its heavy focus on the slice of life aspects. We see a lot of these girls just enjoying their everyday lives, trying to help people as part of the hero club and just overcome the everyday challenges that they face. There is even an arc about Itsuki, one of the girls trying to get over her fear of singing in public and eventually going after her dreams of becoming a musician. I both like and dislike this part of the show. I like that we get to know these characters as people instead of just these characters who have superpowers and have to save the world. It only makes sense that these characters would have their own lives, their own struggles, outside of their being superhero thing. And I also like the contrast between the light moments and then the darker ones because it gave the narrative more weight. The lighthearted moments also tie into the themes of friendship that the show is all about. But I really did feel like these were kind of lacking, especially near the start of the season. I'm not a big fan of Slice of Life normally, so I might be a bit biased here, but I don't feel like these scenes were able to stand on their own as Slice of Life. And even then, the contrast between the fun and difficult times weren't made as well as in other shows. As the season got further along, I do feel like the show improved some here, and the beginning was more introduction and not trying to be something great, so maybe it's kind of justified, but still, it felt like it could have been done better. And even then, the action and the dark parts of the show did not have that weight to them that I wanted. They did not have much hype or feeling behind them. The motivations for the characters were very simple. They wanted to not die and save the world. And well, yes, this motivation makes sense, there aren't the type of personal stakes that really make battles interesting. Plus, the outcomes were typically pretty obvious from the start, though there were some more things added as the show got further along. The plot twists, though. This is where the show aims to have its impact. And it does. From the start, I knew that there was some type of twist coming. If you know anything about the show, or that it even is a dark magical girl show, 
you know there's a twist coming. But the question is, how will it come? And I have to say, the show surprised me here. It was chilling seeing how the characters reacted, and the show knew how to target each individual character and what they cared about. Speaking of characters, they aren't the type to really stand out, though I think this is actually a good thing. A lot of times the standout characters are the ones with extreme personalities or over-the-top backstories about how they became the people that they were. The characters in Yuki Yuna, though, are more human than that. They are good people trying to help those they can, and they value their friends. While they aren't super deep, they do have the things they care about and enjoy, and the darker parts of the show build off these characteristics. The tragedies in the show are potent because of how well they narrow in on what the characters care about, and, well, you'll have to experience that for yourself. The ending of Season 1 is something that did generate a good deal of controversy, and I understand why. But as I was watching it, I still kind of liked it as a way to wrap up the arc, even if it did leave some things not fully explained. But going back to the positives, I do like the themes of the show with the whole idea of being a hero, and also friendship because friendship is magic and anime is good because of friendship. I also liked how the show handled religion and the idea of fighting for a god, and it was done in a way that makes you reflect on reality as well without coming across as overly preachy or overly mocking of religion, which is something that I was glad to see here. Visually, the show was pretty decent. The other world looked cool and unique, and the battles looked okay, though the animation never really stood out to me beyond like the first couple times seeing the parallel world. The music was cool for the epic scenes, and it reminded me of other Dark Magical Girl shows, which I would say is good because it fits the genre. The English dub was pretty good, though it took me a few episodes to get used to it, and I did like that some of the voice actresses here were also in Madoka Magica, which I figure now is as good a time as any to bring up the obligatory Madoka comparisons. While not the first, Madoka Magica was what popularized the Dark Magical Girl genre, and sort of re-established what it meant to be a Dark Magical Girl show, not unlike what Evangelion did for the mech genre. Yuki Yuna has a lot of similarities to Madoka, which I won't hold it against it because they're the same genre, similarities are to be expected. One of the ways that Yuki Yuna differs from Madoka is how the twists go in a different direction. It also focuses much more on the slice of life aspects, while Madoka is more dramatic with its characters and the stories feel more tragic and grand, while in Yuki Yuna the characters feel more human. I also feel that Madoka have much greater production values which allow the emotional impacts to really sink in. If I had to choose which one I prefer, I would say Madoka over Season 1 of Yuki Yuna, but that does not mean that Yuki Yuna does not have any value or that it is a bad show or anything like that. So yeah, overall Yuki Yuna is a worthy entry into the Dark Magical Girl genre. It has these characters with their ideals challenged and a lot of twists that kept me excited all throughout, plus a message of friendship and hope that make me love anime. It has its faults, such as mediocre slice of life, a kind of dull start, and it just couldn't execute as well as I wished it could have, plus there were a few places where we did not get the answers that I wanted. But overall, not bad, and I enjoyed watching it, so if you're watching a blend of Dark Magical Girl and Slice of Life, give this one a try. Though I don't think it's one you need to go out of to watch right away. Or at least, that's what I would have said if we never got a Season 2. Remember, I mentioned that there are three arcs here. So let's talk about the last two, which comprise Season 2. Washi Osumi, the first arc, takes place about two years before the events of the first season. It focuses on a different group of magical girls, and based off some of the events in Season 1, we have a pretty good idea of what is going to happen, at least for the major plot point. This takes away some tension because we know how the fight is going to end, but as to the feeling because we know how the fight is going to end, and we know that the characters can do nothing to stop that end from coming. This arc does give us more information about the world, not everything, though maybe like half of the questions I had were answered here. This arc was also another blend of Slice of Life and Dark Magical Girl, though here I didn't like it as much, though it could be that we did not have as much time to spend with most of these girls. Though it did help to establish the friendship, and again, this show is all about friendship. One of the things I really did like about the arc is how it was able to draw out the themes more and raise the question of if being a hero is worth it if it entails a great sacrifice. The characters are heroes here, willing to do whatever it takes to protect the world, even if it does come with this great cost. Even while it may be for the greater good, 
Suffering does linger after sacrifice, and episode 5 highlighted this so well with the amazingly chilly moment. And that showed what the show has to offer. But beyond this, I don't feel like the arc really added that much. It gave us some background information, explained a few things, but the story itself really did not advance anything. Partly because it took place before season 1, but still. Though I did like the original, and I like this one too, just not quite as much. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the hero chapter, because this is where things get really good. It is a step up from everything else I had seen from Yuki Yuna, and it is the reason I decided to make this review, despite the fact that there are so many other things I could talk about. At the end of the first season, there are some things just not resolved well. But here in this arc, we're able to see what the ending of season one meant and what the consequences of it were. I also like how they restructured sort of the rules of battle. And that just made the action a lot more engaging and exciting to see. But of course, action is only a small part of Yuki Yuna. And as we have learned by now, nothing is easy for these characters. The challenges that the characters face here are different. And I think it's as good that they are not just retreading old ground, but going in a different direction. And here, the challenges that they face are much more personal, I would say, latching onto the core values that these characters have. This is another case where I'm going to try being vague, but it's kind of hard to with the thing that I want to talk about here. But the specific challenge here just felt so personal, not just because it was going after what the characters wanted and got in the way of that, but it went after the things that they care about most. Yeah, just... It was really good to see. It even was able to combine the slice of life and the dark moments together because the characters also felt this overlap and knew that yes, this should be a fun time, but it's not. And the show just conveyed that to the viewer as well, leaving like a pit of your stomach as you see the characters having fun. We also continued to get more of the world as a whole, which again, this was good to see. And I think I got most of my questions answered, though not quite all of it. Plus, the conclusion here was pretty awesome in a lot of different ways. Even if it did not make complete sense, it was pretty close there. And I also liked how this arc allowed it to more differentiate itself from Madoka and the other Dark Magical Girl shows out there. But there are still some issues. A major one, in fact, and that is how the one thing was resolved. Like, it felt like they were setting this up to be a big challenge the characters would have to overcome, but then they kind of like swept it under the rug and made it not matter, which just took away the resolution that I wanted. But overall, though, this arc was great, and it worked as a very satisfying end to the series. Plus, the opening for the final arc was just great. It was a perfect way to build to a conclusion of a series like this. So, with Season 2, Yuki Yuna really proved itself as another great dark magical girl show, and it is a series that I will recommend pretty much to everyone. It has characters face grand challenges, a world that is far less perfect than it seems, but these challenges are faced with the power of friendship and the desire to be a hero, even though these desires are not easy to stick to. So for a final score, I give the show as a whole a score of a 7.25 out of 10 and a rating of worth watching. For shows I would recommend, School Live, also known as Gekko Karashi. I'll include a link in the description, read nothing, go watch it. But if you want a more Magical Girl show, go watch Magical Girl Raising Project. It is a much more action-focused Dark Magical Girl show, and is not one that is as popular as Madoka, which you have probably already seen. So yeah, go watch that one. And that concludes my review. With the third time recording this, hopefully this time it worked. I really, really hope it did. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.